Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 29. In this video we're going to learn about simplifying fractions, otherwise known as reducing a fraction to its lowest terms. So the lesson objective for today is just to learn how to simplify fractions. And again, as I just said, this is also referred to as reducing a fraction to its lowest terms. So I just want to make you guys aware of a little notational change that's going to start in this video. Now, for a lot of you who haven't taken algebra yet, you've only used this symbol to imply multiplication. Right? This is for multiplication. So if I wanted something like 6 times 7, I write 6, then that symbol, then 7, and we know that equals 42. We kind of, as you move higher in math, this symbol is going to go away. You're going to use some other method. Right? And there's multiple methods you can use. I know earlier in the course we talked about a number being next to parentheses implies multiplication. You're going to have that. But primarily what we're going to use is a dot. Okay, We're going to use a dot. So if I wanted 6 times 7, I could write it like this. This symbol also means multiplication. So 6 times 7 equals 42. Or we could do 2 times 8, that equals 16. Right, I'm just replacing this familiar symbol with this new dot, and that's all that we're going to change. Now, you might ask yourself, why do we go back and forth between these symbols? Well, as you get higher in math, you start working with variables. And this, this symbol here will get confused with the variable x, which is very, very common in algebra. So we have to switch to something else so that it's crystal clear what we want you to do. So before we kind of get into the math of simplifying fractions, I want you to take a look at these two rectangles on the screen. Now we have part of each rectangle that's shaded green and part that's just white. If I was to look at this top rectangle here, it's cut up into two equal parts. Here's the first part, here's the second part. So if I was to ask you to represent the amount that's shaded green with a fraction, you would come up with a fraction one half, right? So shaded You have one part, that's going to be your numerator, that's shaded, out of two equal parts. So that's the fraction one half. Now when we look at the rectangle below, we see that it's split up into four equal parts. So one, two, three, four. But I want you to observe that these two parts here take up the same space as this one part here. These two parts here, the parts that are shaded green, take up the same space as this one part here. So if I wanted to represent the shaded amount for this bottom rectangle, okay, so what's shaded in green, I now have two parts, okay, two parts, so that's my numerator, out of a total of four equal parts. So four is my denominator. So now we can visually see that one half is the same as or is equal to two fourths. But you might say, how is that the case? How is that mathematically possible to have the same value from two different numbers? Well, let's just erase this two fourths for a second and just start out with one half. All of you know at this point that if I multiply a number by one, the number remains unchanged. So for example, if I multiply five times one, I get five. If I multiply 277 times one, I get 277. If I multiply one half times one, I get one half. Now all of us also know that any non-zero number divided by itself is one. So if I had, if I had two divided by two, two divided by two, this is the same thing as the number one. So let's say I multiply one half times two over two. I'm basically multiplying one half by one. Now I know we haven't multiplied fractions yet officially, but essentially all we're gonna do is multiply the numerator times the numerator and put that over the denominator times the denominator. So I would do one times two, that would give me two, and I would multiply two times two, and that would give me four. So I took one half and I multiplied it basically by one. It's a complicated form of one, but two over two is one. And I ended up with two fourths. So that's how we can have the same value out of two different fractions. And I could keep going. I could have multiplied 
one half by let's say five over five. Five over five is one. One times five, one times five is five, two times five is 10. So five tenths is the same as one half. So equivalent fractions are fractions that have the same value. And we just saw that with one half, two fourths, and five tenths. Those are all equivalent fractions because at the end of the day, they have the same value. So now that we understand how two or more fractions can look different, but have the same value, let's talk about reducing a fraction to its lowest terms. So a fraction is considered simplified, okay, simplified, or your teacher or your textbook might say reduced to its lowest terms when the numerator and denominator have no common factors other than one, okay, other than one. So to reduce a fraction to its lowest terms, or again, to simplify a fraction, you start out by factoring the numerator and denominator completely. Then you're going to cancel all common factors between the numerator and denominator. All right, so we're gonna jump in and look at some practice problems now. We wanna reduce each fraction to its lowest terms. Okay, we're gonna begin with 15 over 27. So the first thing we wanna do is factor the numerator and denominator completely. Now you've probably gotten pretty good at factoring whole numbers at this point, so you can use a factor tree if you need to, but for some of the smaller numbers, you probably have memorized the prime factorizations already. Like 15, you should know is five times three. You shouldn't need a factor tree for that. 27, you know it's three times three times three. Three times three times three. If you need a factor tree, pause the video and make one. You know, you have nine times three. Three is prime, circle that. Nine is three times three circle both of those. So you see that you get three times three times three. Now, after you've done that, you're looking to cancel common factors between the numerator and denominator. So in other words, if I have a three in the numerator, I can cancel that with one of the threes in the denominator. Essentially, all I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, I have three over three, and that's the same thing as one. So when I go through, I don't have this three anymore. I just have a five in the numerator. And when I go through here, I don't have this three anymore. So I just have a three and another three in the denominator and three times three is nine. So I'm basically saying that 15 27 or 15 over 27 is the same thing as five ninths. And again, reverse this process to kind of get a little insight as to what happened. So you have five ninths. If you multiply it by three over three, Again, three over three is the same thing as one. So I'm not changing the value of the fraction. Five times three is 15, nine times three is 27. Okay, let's look at 18 over 60. So again, we wanna factor the numerator and denominator completely. So for 18, let's just do a factor tree. Let's start out with six times three. So three is prime, let's circle that. Six is two times three. Two and three are both prime, let's circle those. So 18 is two times three times three. Two times three times three. For 60, let's do 10 times six. Six is two times three. Those are both prime. So circle two and circle three. 10 is five times two. And those are both prime as well. So circle five and circle two. So we're gonna have two times two, two times two, times three, times five. So what's common between numerator and denominator? Well, I have one factor of two in the numerator that I can cancel with one factor of two in the denominator. Two over two is equal to one, so we can just remove that. Now, I have one factor of three in the numerator that I can cancel with one factor of three in the denominator, and then that's all. I have this three up here, but I have no other three down here to cancel it with. Then I have this two down here, but no other two up here to cancel it with. Right? I've already canceled out this two, I can't use it again. And then finally, I have this five here, no five up here to cancel it with. So our simplified version of this fraction, I have a three in the numerator, and then in the denominator, I have two times five or 10. So 18 over 60 is equal to three over 10 or three tenths. Let's take a look at 95 over 20. Again, we wanna factor each number. So 95, I know is 19 times five. And those are both prime numbers, so we're gonna circle those. So 19 times five. 20 I know is four times five, and four is two times two. 
So two times two times five. Now what's common between numerator and denominator? I have a 19 in the numerator, no 19 in the denominator. I have a five in the numerator and I have a five in the denominator. So I can cancel those common factors between numerator and denominator. And then I have two twos in the denominator, but I don't have anything in the numerator that matches that. So my answer, I'm gonna have a 19 in the numerator and I'm gonna have two times two or four in the denominator. So I end up with 19 fourths as my answer. All right, what about negative 26 over 156? So we've never worked with a negative yet. And basically when you see a negative, when you factor the number, just write a negative one out to the side and then just write the prime factorization for the number 26. So for 26 is 13 times two. So I'm gonna write negative one times 13 times two, right? Negative one times 13 is negative 13. Negative 13 times two is negative 26. All right, then we have 156. So let's make a factor tree for that one. So 156, I know that it's divisible by two and it's also divisible by four because 56 is divisible by four. So let's do that off to the side. What is 156 divided by four? Four goes into 15 three times. Three times four is 12. Subtract and get three. Bring down the six. Four goes into 36 nine times. Nine times four is 36. Subtract and get zero. So this would be four times 39. Four is two times two. And 39 is 13 times three. So let's circle all of these because they're all prime. So we would have two times two, two times two times 13 times three. Now what can we cancel between numerator and denominator? We can cancel this 13 in the numerator with this 13 in the denominator. We can cancel this two in the numerator with one of the twos in the denominator. Doesn't matter which one, just one of them. Now all I have left in my numerator is a negative one. So that's gonna be my numerator. And in the denominator, I have two times three or six. So our simplified version is negative one sixth. All right, let's look at negative 33 over 77. So again, I have a negative value here. Just write negative one times and then do the prime factorization for 33. And that's just gonna be three times 11. What about 77? Well, 77 is seven times 11. So seven times 11. And as time goes on, you're gonna recognize right away that the greatest common divisor of 33 and 77 is 11. So you're just gonna kind of mentally divide each number by 11. So in other words, if I had negative 33 over 77, once I'm good at this, I'm not gonna go through these steps. I'm gonna say, okay, 33 divided by 11 is three. So this would be negative three over 77 divided by 11 is seven. So I end up with negative three sevenths. So you're gonna be able to mentally do this after some practice. But for right now, it's best not to skip any steps. So we see that we have a common factor of 11 between the numerator and the denominator, and that's all we can cancel. So we end up with negative one times three, or negative three, over seven. So you end up with negative three sevenths as your answer. What about 64 over 288? So 64 I know is two to the sixth power. So two times two times two, times two, times two, times two. Again, if you didn't know that, you could do a factor tree, right? 64 is eight times eight, eight is four times two, two is prime, so we're gonna circle these, and then four is two times two. Just after a while, you're gonna to start to recognize what the prime factorizations are for some of these common numbers. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six factors of two, which we have up there. And then what about 288? Well, I know it's divisible by two and 88 is definitely divisible by four. So I can start with that. Let's divide 288 by four and see what we get. Four goes into 28 seven times, seven times four is 28. Subtract and get zero. Bring down this eight here, four goes into eight twice. Two times four is eight, subtract and get zero. So 72 times four is 288. Now, without making a factor tree, I know that four is two times two. I know that 72 is nine times eight, okay? Nine is three times three. Eight is three factors of two. 
Again, if you're not comfortable with this yet, go ahead and make the factor tree. It's not a big deal. So 288, again, four times 72, four is two times two, 72 is eight times nine, eight is four times two, nine is three times three, three is prime, two is prime, and then four is two times two. And then that's prime. So we have one, two, three, four, five factors of two. So two to the fifth power times two factors of three are three squared. So two to the fifth power times three squared. And that's exactly what we got up here. We have one, two, three, four, five factors of two and two factors of three. Okay, so now we're looking to cancel common factors between numerator and denominator. I can cancel this two with this two, 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 and then this two with this two. Now I have a last two up here because I have one, two, three, four, five, six factors up here, but I only have five factors of two in the denominator. So I'm gonna have one factor of two up here that I can't cancel with anything because I had one more up here than I had down here. These threes, I don't have anything to cancel with up in the numerator. So my simplified version of this fraction, I'm gonna have a two in the numerator and three times three or nine in the denominator. So we end up with two ninths as our answer. All right, so now we have 25 over negative 135. 25 over negative 135. 25 is just five times five. Negative 135, again, if you have a negative involved, just write negative one and then just do the prime factorization for 135. So 135, it ends in a five. So I know it'll be divisible by five. And what is that? 135 divided by five. Five would go into 13 twice. Two times five is 10. Subtract and get three. Bring down the five there. Five goes into 35 seven times. Seven times five is 35. Subtract and get zero. So 27 times five is 135. And we know five is a prime number. We can circle that. And 27 we know is three factors of three, right? It's nine times three, three is prime. Nine again is three times three and three is prime. So we're gonna circle both of these. So three times three times three times five. So what can we cancel between numerator and denominator? Well, all I can do is cancel this five with this five and that's it. All right, I have one more five here but nothing to cancel with down here. And I have some threes down here, nothing to cancel with it up there. So we just end up with five in the numerator and one, two, three threes in the denominator. Three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. Then multiply by negative one, you get negative 27. Now, I can keep it as five over negative 27. I could also write this as negative five over 27, or I could write this as negative and then five over 27. All of these are the same thing. Remember that when we divide integers, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, or a negative divided by a positive is a negative, or you can just have the negative out here just saying, hey, the fraction is negative, and then 5 27 All of these mean the same thing. You have a negative 5 27 as your answer. Okay, let's take a look at 4 19 So 4 we know is 2 times 2. 19 is prime. If I looked at the greatest common divisor, or again, the greatest common factor, of four and 19, your answer would be one. So when you have this situation, you're not gonna be able to simplify the fraction any further, and you just end up with four 19ths as your answer. 